Right. So, uh, I welcome you. Uh, I welcome all of you. And uh, today we are going to discuss uh, an important part of our curriculum uh, that's, that is related with the Unit 3, Human Growth and Development. And uh, specifically, we'll be exploring learning outcome one, uh, which is knowing the stages of growth and development throughout the human lifespan. So in that, we have a, a few important points to discuss. So we need to understand uh, human growth and development. So human growth and development uh, has a, a process of an individual life and which start from conception to old age and uh, each phase of a person's life present uh, unique physical, cognitive, social, and emotional changes. So we will discuss prenatal development, and uh, this stage begins at conception and continues until birth, and it's typically divided into three periods, uh, germinal, first two weeks, then embryonic, that is from week three to eight and fetal that is from week nine until birth uh, then we have infancy so that is from zero to two years this stage covers the period from birth to about two years and is characterized by rapid physical growth and development of motor skills then we have uh, early childhood, and that is uh, starting from year two to six. And uh, children in this stage are developing crucial basic skills and learning how to interact with the world around them. Uh, we have uh, language development, uh, the play, how to play, motor skills, uh, fine motor skills like trying uh, shoelaces or using scissors and gross motor skills like running and jumping develop rapidly. Then we have middle childhood that is from year 6 to year 11, uh, also known as the school years. This stage involves study growth and development in numerous areas. Then we have adolescence uh, that is from uh, year 12 to 18. This is the period of uh, dramatic physical, emotional, and social changes as individual transitions from childhood to adulthood. Then we have early adulthood, that is from uh, 18 years to 40 years. And uh, uh, this stage is about gaining independence and pursuing personal and professional goals. Then we have middle adulthood, that is from age 40 to 65. This life stage is characterized by uh, maturity in personal and professional life with a focus on contributing to the community and supporting the next generation. Then we have late adulthood, that is 65 plus years. Then in this stage, uh, we spent reflecting on life, enjoying retirement, and navigating the changes that comes with aging. So all these stages uh, are fundamental in grasping how people grow, change, and develop throughout their lives. Each stage builds upon previous ones and paves the way for future growth. Now we'll move to the next slide. Right, so these all are the aims. Uh, so this unit aims to develop an understanding of different areas of growth and development and how each uh, development area has impact on the other. And this unit introduced learners to various stages of growth and development that a human being passes through on their journey through life. 
Right, so here we have the indicative content for the learning outcome one. So we will uh, go through detailed stages of growth and development throughout the human lifespan and uh, focusing on physical, intellectual, emotional, and social development. So again, uh, we have infancy uh, in it and uh, is from zero to two years and uh, if you talk about the physical development so this is a period of rapid growth infants develop cross motor skills such as rolling over sitting up crawling and eventually walking fine motor skills also develop such as holding objects and picking up small items using their pincer grip then we have intellectual development. Infants learn about the world through sensory experiences and play. They develop object performance around 8 to 12 uh, months, meaning they understand that objects still exist even when they can't see them. Then if we talk about the emotional and social development, so they have bonding and attachment to caregivers are crucial. Infants begin expressing feeling through crying, laughing, and cooing. They start recognizing familiar faces and responding to their names. Then if we talk about uh, the childhood, so in childhood, the physical development are in early childhood. Children improve their gross motor skills, running, jumping, and fine motor skills drawing, writing, uh, and during middle childhood, physical growth slows, but muscle coordination and strength improve. Then for intellectual development, cognitive skills like language, counting, and problem solving develop rapidly. Children begin attending schools where they gain academic knowledge and learn complex thinking skills. Then emotional social development, so uh, in that, children learn to express and manage their emotions better. Social interaction increase and they form friendship and peer groups. They also start developing a self-concept and understand social roles and norms. If you talk about adolescence, that is from year 13 to 18. So physical development uh, involves adolescence uh, is marked by puberty which brings significant physical changes such as growth spurts, development of sexual organ, and changes in body composition. Then uh, for intellectual development, teenagers develop advanced cognitive abilities such as abstract thinking and hypothetical reasoning. Their problem solving and decision making skills become more sophisticated. If we talk about emotion and social development, so adolescents seek independence and begin to form their identity. Peer relationships are highly influential, uh, in, highly influential and they start exploring romantic relationships. Um, emotional regulation become crucial during this stage. Then if you talk about early adulthood, so for that, um, the physical development uh, has uh, uh, like uh, they are at their peak uh, uh, and uh, like um, their physical performance also uh, at peak they maintain a high level of strength and stamina for intellectual development higher education and career skills develop people engage in long-term planning and critical thinking then if we talk about emotional social development so developing intimate relationships, including partnerships and starting family become a focus. People also establish and navigate their career path. If we talk about middle adulthood, uh, so in physical, uh, in that we have physical development and physical signs of aging, such as wrinkles and decreased stamina become more noticeable. Some may experience health issues like uh, 
high blood pressure or joint pain and uh, for intellectual development many people are in their prime uh, professionally uh, possessing significant experience or expertise and problem solving abilities based on their experience for emotional social development relationships with adult children and uh, aging parents play a significant role people often focus on contributing to their community and mentoring younger generations if you talk about late adulthood so for physical development there is an increased risk of health issues and physical abilities may decline regular health checks and medical care becomes important then if we talk about intellectual development so while some cognitive decline might occur many older adults find ways to keep their minds active through hobbies reading and social activities for emotional and social development many reflect on their lives and seek to maintain meaningful relationships social network might shrink but deep connection often remain with family and close friends so these all are the important aspects uh so uh overall we need to understand these stages milestones and the care needed throughout uh, life help us to better support individual as they grow and develop so and we need to remember that each person development is unique influenced by both nature and uh nurture now we will move to the next slide to watch a video not not working so we'll move to the next slide right in this slide we have to know stages of growth and development throughout the human life span right so we have to discuss about uh, the eight basic periods of development the first one is the prenatal development conception to birth so if we talk about the stages so this period includes three main stages germinal embryonic and fetal so uh, germinal stage is the first two weeks after conception this stage involves the creation of the zygote and its implication uh, implantation on the uh uterine wall then if we talk about the embryonic stage so from the third to eighth week uh organogenesis the formation of organs occur and if we talk about the fetal stage so from the ninth week to birth the body grows rapidly systems mature to prepare for life outside the womb examples include physical development by the end of the embryonic stage the heart begins to beat and the basic structures of the brain and spine have formed during the fetal stages the baby starts to exhibit movements and senses then if we talk about uh, infancy and toddlerhood so it's from birth to 2 years so this is a period of rapid growth and development across all domains which include uh, physical development so infants uh, triple their birth weight and grow significantly in length they achieve milestones such as sitting standing and walking for cognitive development the development of object performance understanding uh, that object uh, 
continue to exist even when they cannot be seen they have emotional and social development so they form strong bonds and attachments with their caregiver social smiling and separation anxiety around 8 months are also significant markers for early childhood uh, that is from year 3 to 6 uh, this stage is marked by continued physical growth language development and socialization then if we talk about middle childhood so children begin school and experience steady growth and increase cognitive structural and social abilities uh, then if we talk about adolescence so uh, it is characterized by the transition from childhood to adulthood with significant physical cognitive and socio economic changes then if we talk about early adulthood so uh, for that this stage is uh, focused on establishing personal and professional life structures uh then if we talk about middle adulthood that is from 40 years to 65 years so middle adulthood involves reflections on life achievement and contribution and often the management of responsibilities to uh next generations so the last one is the late adulthood that is 65 plus years so this stage includes retirement reflections on life and coping with aging process so if we generally talk about changes from birth to old age uh, affecting health and well-being so we have a concept of nature versus nurture debate so we have biological programming so this stresses the genetic influence on development uh, effects of experience versus heredity interaction of genetics with environment shapes uh, individual development then we have maturation theory so development unfolds in a predictable uh, sequence due to genetic instructions then we have developmental norms and milestones um, this involves like tracking holistic development include physical intellectual and social uh, socio economic uh, milestones then we have uh, delayed or arrested development can result from various factors needing intervention and support services there are uh, we can say uh stages of care so early years and pediatric care we have immunizations regular health checks and developmental assessment for children and young people uh, we have education support mental health services and social care for adults we have uh, preventive health checks chronic disease management for older adult services we have uh, uh we have care involves comprehensive management of multiple health issues of often like requiring multidisciplinary approaches as well so these all are the important aspects we move to the next slide right so here we need to describe physical intellectual uh, emotional and social development for each of the life stages of an individual so we'll start start discussing on that so first one is the conception so if we talk about the uh, physical development so conception begins when a sperm fertilizes an egg resulting in the formation of a zygote which starts rapidly dividing and developing into multicellular organism for intellectual development at this stage intellectual development is non existent as the zygote is purely a collection of cells for emotional development emotional development is not applicable at this stage 
social development is not applicable at this stage then if we talk about uh, pregnancy so if we talk about gestation so the physical development from uh, like um, as a mother so various physical changes occur such as weight gain changes in hormone level and uh, expansion of the abdomen so for fetuses the significant development occurs involving the formation of major organs limbs and the brain this stage is divided into three trimesters first trimester is the basic structure form then in the second rapid growth and movement to start then in the third development is completed and the fetus prepares for birth if we talk about the intellectual development for the fetus so basic uh, neural structures develop but no consciousness through um, like throughout occurs then if you talk about the emotional development so emotional bonds start forming between the mother and the unborn child influenced by a psychological and physiological changes uh, we have uh, social development as well so it's uh, not applicable directly to the fetus but the expectant mother might experience changes in social interaction due to her pregnancy then if we talk about birth so uh, the baby transitions from the womb to the outside world initiating uh, breathing feeding through the mouth and other necessary function independently and uh, for intellectual development so not directly applicable immediately after birth however early sensory stimulation begin to lay the foundation for future intellectual development for emotional development so initial emotional bond strengthen as the baby interacts with parents and caregivers recognizing voices and smells then for social development the baby uh, begins to engage socially through basic interactions like crying cooing and uh, facial expression which uh, facilitate bonding for infancy uh, if we talk about the physical development so uh, the rapid growth in height and weight occurs uh, then development of some uh, motor skills uh, gross motor skills uh, like crawling standing walking they have fine motor skills grasping objects drawing uh, stacking blocks and uh, they have digestive system matured from milk to solid food then uh, if you talk about early childhood so the early childhood is uh, if you talk about the physical development so steady growth in height and weight uh, greater coordination and balance enhanced motor skills climbing running drawing cutting shapes with scissors uh, if you talk about the intellectual development language skills explore complex sentences and storytelling abilities emerges engagement in imaginative play and developing problem solving skills uh if we talk about uh, middle childhood so uh, for middle childhood physical development uh, occurs like study physical growth and increase athletic abilities uh, improve motor skills both gross uh, that include sports activities and fine uh, this includes writing detailing and uh, like detailed drawing also include in that so we have uh, all those important uh, life stages as an individual so now we will move to the next slide okay here uh, we are going to explore the development of infants from birth to 12 month we are using the 
FIES framework, which stands for physical, intellectual, emotional, and social development. And understanding these aspects will help us to see how babies grow and change during their first year of life. So, now if we talk about physical development, so in physical development, growth and reflexes, for example, babies uh, double their birth weight by about five months and triple it by their first birthday. Their length increases by about 50% in the first year. For example, newborns have reflexes like the uh, rooting reflex. Uh, that means turning their head when their cheek is stroke and the graphs reflex grabbing anything placed in their hand. So if we talk about the milestones, so for zero to three months, baby typically start gaining control over their head and neck movements. Um, and around three months, babies can lift their head while lying on their bed and stomach. And uh, about four to six months, uh, rolling over, sitting with support and improve hand eye coordination develop. Then for seven to nine months, infants learn to sit without support and start crawling. Um, then for uh, 10 to 12 months, most babies begin to walk with or without support. Uh, example, like we can say that uh, by their first birthday, many infants take their first steps or are uh, cruising, walking while holding on to furniture or any support. For uh, intellectual development, uh, they have sensory development and exploration. So from zero to three months, baby explore the world through their senses. They are very attentive to movement and bright colors. From four to six months, object exploration becomes more coordinated babies start to reach for and uh, manipulate objects from seven to nine months uh, that cause uh, that has uh, cause and effect play become interesting uh, for example dropping toys from a high chair and watching them fall over and over again from year 10 to 12 months, problem solving skills start to emerge. Babies understand basic object performance, the idea that objects still exist even when out of sight. So we, they have language development, uh, they have uh, emotional development, they have uh, a social development as well. So in social development, so they have interaction with others. Uh, for example, an infant may calm down at the sound of a familiar voice or respond with a smile when someone speaks gently to them. Um, and uh, if we uh, discuss about uh, how do these uh, development uh, interrelate, so physical development, often serves as the foundation for intellectual growth. For example, as a gross motor skills like sitting up and crawling improve um, and babies can explore their environment more thoroughly, boosting their cognitive and intellectual development. So uh, in, in intellectual development enables better emotional uh, regulation as babies learn to understand and respond to, to their surroundings and uh, they recognize their caregivers or understand object performance and uh, which can make them feel more secure. They have emotional development, social development. So overall, like by understanding these aspects of uh, PIES, which is physical, intellectual, emotional, and social development, we can see how interconnected and vital these areas are during the first year of life. Now we we'll move to the next slide. Right. So here we need to discuss about the intellectual level. So if we talk about intellectual development, they have uh, sound recognition 
and uh, um, like uh, in that, uh, what happened? Infants rapidly develop their brain capacity to recognize sound, making them responsive to their environment. They can distinguish voices and other auditory uh, stimuli, responding with alertness or startless. And uh, example is like a baby might turn their head towards the sound of a familiar voice or a sudden loud noise, showing their uh, growing sensitivity to sound in their surroundings. They have vocabulary development as well as their brain matures. Babies start to make variations in sound, laying the foundation for language development. Uh, example is uh, infants might start uh, uttering simple syllables like Baba or Mama. Uh, they demonstrate their early attempts at communication and vocalization. Then, if we talk about uh, the uh, if we talk about the phase uh, that in, in, it has like infants exploration and learning through their senses and motor action, they begin to understand the world around them throughout what they touch, see, hear, and uh, feel physically. So, this all in the sensory motor stage. Uh, example is like uh, babies might reach for a colorful toy, feel its texture and bring it to their mouth to explore, uh, linking their sensory input with physical exploration. They have, uh, again, emotional development. So there are primary emotions, which are love, fear, and anger are among the first emotion that babies experience. They express these feelings through vocalization, facial expression, and body language as well. Um, example, it could be a baby smiles and coos when cutter cries out of fear when encountering a loud noise or shows sign of discomfort when feeling hungry or tired. They have uh, self-esteem uh, uh, and concept. Babies start developing a sense of self and uh, self-esteem as they interact with their caregivers and the environment around them. So example could be through positive interaction, cuddling and comforting infants build feeling of security and confidence that contribute to a healthy self-concept. They have trust and security infants develop trust and learn to rely on their caregivers for comfort, nourishment, and safety. They have awareness of self and others through interactions with caregivers and others. Baby begin to develop an awareness of themselves and their relationship with those around them. So understanding the uh, intricate development of infants, intellectual, emotional, and sensory capacities provide valuable insight into their early growth and well-being. So as a caregiver and educator, recognizing and supporting these early developmental milestones are essential for fostering a strong foundation for a healthy cognitive, emotional, and social development. Now we'll move to the next slide. So here we need to discuss about uh, the social aspects. So we have uh, pro-social behavior uh, that includes desire for social interaction. A baby uh, uh, has a natural uh, inclination towards socialization knows, known as uh, pro-social behavior from an early age. They seek out interactions with others and enjoy being in the company of people. For example, around six months of age, infants show an increased interest in engaging with others. They may smile, uh, babble, and uh, react positively when in the presence of family members and caregivers. They have uh, uh, facial expressions and... Uh, um, like uh, 
infants have a remarkable ability to mimic facial expression they observe in other demonstra demonstrating their early social learning and connectivity then they have sharing and cooperative behavior as part of their development social skills um, like the baby engage in acts of sharing and cooperation they might offer toys object or gestures of interaction to those around them indicating a desire to connect and engage in play they have uh, play and interaction uh, which involves enjoyment of social play infants develop joy and stimulation from social play interaction being around others and engaging in playful uh, exchange contributes significantly to their social and emotional development uh, for example babies might giggle laugh and vocalize sound during interactive play session indicating their pleasure and engagement in the social interaction they have uh, uh like throughout social interaction infants develop uh, um, and uh, explore the dynamics of communication turn talking and building connection with others the uh, these early exchanges lay the groundwork for future uh, for future social skills and relationships they have attachment and bonding the social interaction and connection that infants establish play are um, play a crucial role in formation of secure attachments with caregivers and family members these bond provide a foundation for emotional security and well-being they have early communication and engagement so through our, through their social interaction uh, infants begin to develop uh, essential communication skills and social engagement practices uh, they express need uh, responding to stimuli and uh, seeking interaction are key components of early social communication so overall we can say that infant social development is characterized by their innate uh, sociability and uh, early pro social tendencies and engagement in social interaction by observing and supporting infants in their early social exchanges the caregivers and educators can uh, nurture their social skills uh, emotional connections and uh, building relationships from the earliest stages of life and uh, in brief these all are the important points to the next slide in the meanwhile if you if anyone if you have any question then please do ask uh then we have to discuss about childhood 4 to 9 years okay yeah. so in that uh, we have development of gross motor skills Uh, children in this age group demonstrate uh, improvements in their gross motor skills which involves the larger muscles of the body and coordination of movements uh, example could be uh, walking backwards children can walk in reverse uh, showing improved coordination and uh, spatial uh, awareness then they can climb stairs as well uh, Um, and uh, like for example they have children can hop and easily jump uh, of objects and develop a good sense of body balance they have uh, locomotion and balance development children master locomotion the ability to move from one place to another effectively and uh, display enhanced balance skills then they develop uh, Uh, fine motor skills so fine motor skills involves the coordination of smaller muscles such as hand and finger movements enabling uh, precision and um, dexterity in various activities so examples of fine motor skills uh, development is building towers with block children can stack blocks to create structures showing control and precision in their hand movements uh they can uh paint with big brushes 
using uh, scissors to cut papers uh, and uh, they have progression in fine motor control that include writing and drawing skills they have physical growth and body changes uh, which include height and bone development reproductive organ development and uh, they have head proportion so by this stage children's head are approximately 90% of the size of an adult head and uh, with facial features becoming more uh, proper um, and to the body it has more proportion to the body then if we talk about uh, in general so Uh, if we understand the physical development of children age uh, 4 to 9 years provide a valuable insight into our motor skill uh, growth patterns and overall physical capabilities during this crucial period so this is all about childhood so now here we have to discuss about intellectual level so we have different stages or ages here right so the first one is age 3 to 4 right so the initial language development and uh, education begins at this stage so if we talk about uh, language so children begin to recognize and respond to their written names so uh, they show uh, signs of uh, repeating words or phrases they hear and demonstrate the ability to communicate through signs or words uh for example a 3 year old child may point to their name on a piece of paper or show excitement when recognizing familiar words in their environment they have uh, imaginative play and representation they engage in symbolic play often drawing uh, they use the drawing to represent event or convey ideas from age 4 uh, to 5 early education experiences and curiosity occur they have the introduction to schools um, for example a 4 year old may uh, share uh, colors they see count toys and inquire about why things happen the way they do and uh, they have language and communication skills Uh, they display an interest in new words and meanings and they try to comprehend and use language effectively enjoyment of music sound and playing instrument emerges and uh, from age 6 and above cognitive uh, growth and language development occurs they have advanced cognitive ability children are capable of multitasking and thinking about multiple concepts Uh, at the same time and uh, they can differentiate between real and imaginary uh, scenarios and construct narratives mm, just for example a 6 year old might create stories with a clear beginning middle and end and showing their improved cognitive skills in storytelling and comprehension they have uh, academic challenges and language proficiency so they face more complex academic challenges such as learning grammar rules and understanding their um, or like they expand their vocabulary as well their grammar skills develop as they grow and uh, enhancing their ability to articulate and express themselves effectively so these all are the important points from this slide Now moving on to the next slide, we have the emotional aspects. Okay, so uh, for this one, they have gender identity and self concept, um, acknowledgement of gender roles. Children or develop uh, an awareness of their gender identity and may exhibit preferences for toys or activities. Um, which include traditionally associated with their gender 
जस्ट फॉर एग्जाम्पल बॉयज में ग्रेविटेट टूअर्ड्स एक्शन फिगर्स और टॉय कार्स वाइल्ड गर्ल्स में शो इंटरेस्ट इन डॉल्स और रोल प्लेइंग एक्टिविटीज लाइक प्लेइंग हाउस दे हैव स्टेबल सेंस कॉन्सेप्ट लाइक बाई दिस स्टेज चिल्ड्रन हैव अ मोर डिस्टिंग सेल्फ कॉन्सेप्ट नोइंग देयर लाइक्स एंड डिसक्स एंड हैविंग अ सेंस ऑफ आइडेंटिटी दे हैव इमोशनल रेगुलेशन एंड एम्पेथी so um, they have uh, humor and emotional control children begin to show a sense of humor and improve emotional regulation uh, which allows them to manage their feelings and interaction more effectively they have empathy and consideration for others uh, they have uh, understanding and managing emotions then uh, they have social interaction and emotional growth which includes social awareness and mature responsibility and the responses as well uh, example is like uh, they may actively seek to support a friend in need show kindness or display sharing behaviors to maintain positive social relationships they have uh, conflict resolution and peer interactions as well uh example is like children may resolve conflicts by expressing their needs listening to others perspective and finding mutually agreeable solution uh, which foster positive social connections and emotional growth next slide so here we have to discuss about the uh, fascinating world of how children interact socially so children have this amazing capacity to make friends and engage with each other without being hindered by factors like race language or appearance um, like we if we think about a time when we played with a new friend and uh, we uh, have we ever spoken about their background before joining the fun mostly most likely we we not and uh, we were focused on enjoying the moment together so usually as a kid grow older uh, they start realizing the importance of responsibilities for example uh, if we imagine like um, as a uh, younger sibling or a family member uh, we care for so we understand the need to look out for them and ensure their well being and uh, similarly tasks like brushing our teeth daily become a part of our routine and uh, showing that responsibilities come in various forms then we move to the next slide so <clears throat> in this one uh, like uh, we have uh, we have to discuss about uh, adolescence and uh, it's a transformative phase marked by significant physical changes as individual transition from childhood to adulthood and one of the key milestone during adolescence is puberty and uh, It's a period characterized by various changes triggered by hormones. So, if we talk about puberty, so it's the stage when the body prepares for reproduction through the influence of hormones. Um, if we talk about females, so estrogen plays a crucial role, while in males, uh, testosterone is the key hormone driving these changes. and these hormonal shifts lead to distinct transformations in both girls and boy setting the foundation for their future development and uh, if we talk about uh, uh, females so so for females experiencing uh, puberty around the age of uh, 11 to 13 they have notable changes include uh, the growth of uh, breasts the development of fat layers and the skin the appearance of pubic hair and the onset of menstrual periods and uh, these changes mark the beginning of new phase in their physical development and if you talk about male 
so males undergo puberty slightly later typically between the ages of 13 to 15 and uh, during this period boys experience their voice uh, deepening uh, and uh, the growth of pubic, pubic hair and facial hair and uh, they have an increase in muscle, muscle strength and uh, growth and development of uh, their uh, panis and testicles so they change uh, so all of these changes reflect the transition towards adulthood and the maturation of the male body. So we have covered everything from this slide. And we move to the next one. So here we have to discuss about the intellectual and emotional side. So in that we can say that uh, for example uh, at a school uh, adolescents can engage in advanced problem solving tasks and approach challenges from a scientific perspective uh, for example if a phone is not charging they might uh, deduce that the plug is not working correctly uh, this will showcase their enhanced reasoning skills improve argumentative abilities and emerging capacity to consider the well-being of themselves and others and uh, if you talk about the emotional aspects so emotionally adolescents develop uh, and they undergo a journey of self-discovery as they form a distinct sense of identity and this process is crucial for shaping their personalities and values However, external influences such as the environment or hormonal changes can impact their development as well. So, they have given an example here. So, in a girl's hormonal fluctuation during the menstrual cycle, that can lead to mood swings and emotional instability. And while these changes... Uh, are a natural part of development they can affect emotional well-being and behavior it's important to recognize and understand these emotional fluctuations to navigate this phase with resilience and self-awareness now we need to discuss about the social side so um, during this stage, we can say that uh, the teens, um, they gravitate more towards their friends and peers and seeking validation and building their sense of self-worth uh, through these social connections. So friendship plays a crucial role in shaping um, their identities and influencing their behavior. And as they navigate the complexities of peer relationships, teenagers may find themselves um, emulating the actions, speech, and fashion choices of their peers. And this desire to fit in and gain acceptance is a common aspect of adolescent social development. So by understanding the complexities of peer influence and social dynamics, during adolescence can provide valuable insight into the importance of healthy relationships and individuals. And uh, by fostering a supportive and inclusive environment, we can help teenagers cultivate more uh, meaningful connection and make positive choices as they navigate to transform stages of life. So the next slide, we have adulthood, 19 to 65 years. Right, so we have physical aspects, intellectual, uh, they have given example of athletes, yeah. So, uh, 
for that we can say that uh, successful athletes and they often reach the peak of their physical abilities during adulthood and uh, demonstrating the importance of maintaining health and fitness throughout this stage of life and it's worth noting that there are two types of aging in adulthood Uh, primary vision was molecular and cellular changes and secondary uh, which is influenced by factors like physical inactivity or poor diet <laughs> so primary aging signs such as wrinkles dry skin decreased reproductive capacity uh, and uh, like hearing and vision difficulties and abnormal fat uh, um, especially on the abdominal area so the fat accumulation may manifest towards the later years of adulthood for for women uh, this stage brings significant bodily changes with the ability to conceive at its peak in early adulthood and the onset of menopause towards the middle to later years of stage if we talk about the uh, intellectual level so individuals in adulthood are typically at their peak uh, uh, and uh, they able to think critically solve complex problems and make decision based on logic and experience they have the we have like uh, two types of intelligence so crystallized and fluid um, they play a significant role in adulthood crystallized intelligence reflects the knowledge and experience accumulated over time and uh, while the fluid intelligence involves basic data processing skills uh, while crystallized intelligence tends to remain stable or even increase uh, fluid intelligence may start to decline in adulthood so we understand the physical changes and intellectual capabilities of uh, adulthood uh, they are essential for appreciating the complexities of life uh, and uh, life stages as well so i believe these all are the important aspects on the next slide we have to discuss about the emotional and social aspects so uh, during adulthood uh, individuals embark on a journey of emotional growth and uh, particularly in their relationship with romantic partners um, and they they are cultivating positive and healthy relationships uh, that is vital for overall well-being as a stable uh, and uh, they have intimate connections often contribute to emotional stability and fulfillment and uh, however as the individual progress towards later adulthood the desire for tranquility and peace in their life tends to increase and uh, adulthood can also bring about emotional challenges such as feeling of depression anxiety or dissatisfaction and uh, for social aspects <clears throat> uh, the adults bears the responsibility of securing uh, employment or establishing a career to ensure financial independence as most individuals can no longer rely on parental support so finding a job become essential for maintaining financial stability and meeting personal needs and uh, another Uh, aspect of adulthood is the role of parenthood and becoming a parent brings both joys and challenges as the responsibilities of raising children can be demanding and time consuming they need to uh, balance the pressure of parenting with personal well-being and self care and that becomes a central focus for individual during the this stage of life as well then to talk about later adulthood okay so we have to discuss about physical changes 
and intellectual changes. So, in later adulthood, individual experience significant uh, physical changes as the aging process takes its toll, uh, and uh, we they have breathing, uh, blood circulation, and heart rate may weaken, and leading to a decrease in overall muscular strength. The skin loses elasticity, become more sensitive, and develop wrinkles due to reduced uh, collagen production. Organ function also declines, impacting processes like bladder control, uh, which may require the use of dampers. Uh, they have uh, hair loss, and the hair loss become more noticeable, particularly in males, and uh, sensory functions like hearing and vision are impaired affecting the individual overall quality of life. And individuals in later adulthood are more vulnerable to illness and may experience health issues due to a weakened immune system and short uh, cell reproduction. Then for intellectual changes, uh, so at this stage, cognitive function can also be affected as the brain may not operate as efficiently as before. So this decline in uh, cognitive process is, uh, processing speed can impact problem solving abilities and the capacity to cope with life challenges. Some individuals may experience cognitive decline or conditions like dementia, uh, which lead to memory loss and forgetfulness. <laughs> they have uh, mental health issues such as dementia can manifest at individuals struggle to recall recent events or or face challenges in memory retention. So these conditions can uh, pose significant obstacles to uh, daily functioning and may, requ may require specialized care and support. These all are the important aspects. Then we have the emotional and social aspect. So in later adulthood, individuals may experience a range of emotional responses as they navigate the challenges and transitions that come with aging. So some elderly individuals may gravitate towards the activity theory. So in which uh, where they feel the need to engage in activities, dress and behave as they did in their younger years to maintain a sense of continuity and vitality. Uh, so, many people in later adulthood seek to reconnect with family members or childhood friends and uh, yearning from uh, uh, social connections and a sense of belonging. So, however, this life stage can also bring feelings of loss, sadness and loneliness as individuals mourn the passing of loved ones or experience the decrease in social interaction. And uh, for social aspects, um, uh, at this stage, most individuals in later adulthood may prefer quieter and more peaceful environments and opting for secure locations like the countryside where they can relax and spend time with their parents, close friends, or enjoy uh, solitude, seeking uh, tranquility and simplicity becomes a priority for many older adults. <clears throat> and while some other uh, some older individuals they gravitate towards a quieter lifestyle, there are still those who remain socially active and seek new experiences. These individuals may engage in activities like travel, leisure centers, or dance classes. Uh, what they do is demonstrate a desire for continued growth and exploration, even in later life. Now, moving to the next slide, we have to identify key changes from birth to old age affecting health and well being. We have to discuss about nature, nurture. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, you can say that from birth to old age, um, numerous key changes impact health and well being, and these are influenced by a combination of uh, nature and nurture factors. 
so if we talk about nature so it refers to genetic in inheritance and biological factors that shape our personality and development from childhood to adulthood then if you talk about nurture so it involves external influences post conception such as uh, life experiences learning and environmental exposures that impact individual development they have uh, aging process as well and uh, they have biological changes so aging is characterized by the accumulation of molecular and cellular damage over time leading to a decline in physical and mental capacities and uh, they have increased risk of diseases and eventually mortality overall these changes have profound implication for health and well-being across the life span individuals may inherit genetic uh, predispositions to certain conditions that affect their health while environmental factors and life experiences can further shape their overall well-being as well we have a additional reading here we can read this additional reading section then for slide 23 we have to explain developmental norms and milestones <clears throat> okay uh, so right so developmental milestone uh, are key stages in a child's growth that act as checkpoints for parents uh, healthcare providers and educators these milestones uh, has a child physical social and emotional development and providing important indicators of progress as well we have individual pace of development and uh, children follow their unique development path but there are general milestones that most children typically reach by a certain age and examples of developmental milestone include a child's first smile first word or first step which demonstrate their evolving capability then we have uh, uh, monitoring development and uh, so developmental milestones serve as a tool for parents healthcare professionals and teachers to monitor a child's growth and identify any potential delays so a developmental delay uh, occurs when a child does not achieve specific milestone uh, which are expected of their age and indicating a need for further evaluation we have the uh, we have the role of healthcare providers and uh, identifying developmental delays early it is crucial for timely intervention and healthcare providers play a vital role in recognizing delays and recommending uh, appropriate intervention and uh, intervention may include therapy educational support or other strategies to help address developmental challenges and support the child uh, need and uh, they need to support the child's progress as well so developmental norms and milestone provide valuable insight into a child's growth and uh, help ensure that they are reaching age appropriate milestones and by monitoring these milestones and addressing the any delays uh, promptly caregivers and professionals can support children in reaching their full developmental potential and thriving in their early years right so here we have to discuss why are developmental milestones important <clears throat> okay so developmental milestones they play a uh, vital role in child development and early intervention so we have first uh, uh, developmental milestone uh, that help uh, like track a child's progress across various domains 
like physical mental social and emotional development and uh, achieving these milestone it indicates that the child is going and developing appropriately for their age we have individual variation so while there are typical age ranges for milestone children develop at their own pace some children uh, may reach milestone earlier while others may reach them later so individual variations are normal and uh, early identification of delays uh, when a child uh, does not reach a specific milestone at uh, expected ages it may signal a developmental delay as well uh, so early identification of delay is uh, very important as it allows for timely intervention to address any changes and uh, we have when a child uh, development delays may need extra support like some children may need extra support uh in various interventions such as speech therapy or physical therapy then we we'll move to the next slide here we have uh, we need to discuss about types of developmental milestones so for example if we talk about the uh, physical milestones so physical milestones uh, has the developmental of uh, motor skills and physical ability so example for example we can say that uh, reaching and uh, grasping object sitting up crawling walking running and fine motor skills like stacking blocks or holding a spoon so uh, child abilities so yeah mm. right so then if we talk about uh, the cognitive milestone so uh, in that we can say that uh, a cognitive milestone relate to the development of thinking learning and problem solving skills then we can say we have social and emotional milestone social and emotional milestone focus on a child's ability to form relationship manage uh, manage their emotions and navigate social uh, interactions they have communication and language um, milestone and communication and language milestone um, is like uh, important in to a child development of speech language and communication skills as well for example um, that include going and babbling in infancy saying first words uh, following simple instructions and engaging in conversation and developing age appropriate language skills now we we'll move to the next slide so now we have to discuss the physical milestones so we have uh, gross motor skills Uh, for example uh, in gross motor skills um, that involves movement and uh, using large muscle groups so uh, these skills typically develop first in young children this milestone include uh, rolling over and um, uh, like uh, also like uh, they can move over unassisted by 6 month and crawling uh, unassisted by uh, 12 months and uh, walking independently by uh, around like 12 to 15 months then they have fine motor skills so fine motor skills involve movements using small muscle groups such as those in the hands and fingers and uh, that milestone include holding a crayon and uh, between um, 12 and 15 months and using utensils between 8 and 24 months 
and performing tasks that require precision and coordination. Then we have uh, identifying physical development delays. So uh, physical development delays are more noticeable in the first year of a child's life and sign, some signs of uh, physical development delay may include difficulty in controlling their head and neck and uh, delayed sitting and crawling or walking or a uh, uh, limp body posture. So, and uh, there could be stiffness and uh, which uh, can also indicate potential physical development delays that require further evaluation. And uh, we need to monitor a child physical milestone is critical for assessing their overall development and identifying any potential delays that may uh, warrant intervention or additional support. And by tracking these milestones and recognizing signs of delays early, caregivers and healthcare providers can ensure uh, that uh, the development is is properly uh, is properly going. And uh, now we'll move to the <clears throat> next slide. We have cognitive milestone. Okay. <laughs> right. So uh, for cognitive development in children, uh, this uh, milestone reflects a child's capacity to think, learn, and reason as they explore their surroundings and draw conclusions. Children progress from being uh, concrete and uh, literal thinkers to develop more abstract and uh, imaginative thinking skills by uh, around age five. For example, uh, it includes a 12-month-old identifying pictures in a book, a four-year-old reciting the alphabet, and a five-year-old uh, reciting a nursery rhyme. And uh, we have uh, identifying cognitive development delays. So again, uh, cognitive delays are often noticeable around uh, 24 months of age. Signs of cognitive development delays include diminished uh, curiosity, short attention span, challenges with logical thinking, difficulty in understanding rules and lack of self-help skills. Uh, like uh, children with cognitive delays may require additional support to enhance their cognitive abilities and reach their developmental potential. So monitoring a child's cognitive milestone is crucial for evaluating their cognitive growth and identifying potential, potential delays that may impact their learning by problem-solving skills. Uh, if we recognize signs of cognitive delays early, caregivers and professionals can offer intervention and support to help children overcome challenges and foster their cognitive development effectively. Then for slide 28, we have social and emotional milestones. Okay, so for social milestone, um, like uh, it focuses on how children engage with others, form relationships, and interact with within the social setting. And uh, for example, uh, it includes a two-month-old smiling and parents a six-month-old uh, smiling uh, at themselves in the mirror. Then. Uh, emotional milestones as well. Mm, emotional and emotional. Right. So emotional milestone, it involves a child's ability to express and manage their emotion effectively. Example uh, is like... Uh, child uh, demonstrating joy, sadness, anger, and frustration in appropriate ways. 
and showing empathy towards other and developing a sense of self confidence as well they have uh, signs of social and emotional development delays and uh, that include uh, difficulties in maintaining conversation understanding social cues or managing emotions effectively and uh, children with social and emotional delays may struggle to express their feeling and uh, they have uh, challenges in forming relationship so if we recognize social and emotional milestone it's like uh, vital for understanding a child's social development and emotional regulation and by monitoring these milestone and identifying signs of potential delay caregivers and professional can provide the necessary support and intervention to help children build healthy social connections and uh, navigate emotions and foster positive social inter interactions and early identification and intervention for social and emotional delays can help children to develop essential skills for building fulfilling relationships and emotional well-being Here we have to discuss about communication and language milestone. <clears throat> so for communication milestone, uh, it has a child's development of both verbal and non-verbal communication skills. Uh, initially, children may communicate non-verbally through gestures, expression, and body language. Uh, for example, a newborn roots, uh, um, roots for feeding and a nine-month-old uh, nods their head for no. And uh, we can have verbal communication milestones which progress as children develop uh, language skills with examples including a 12-month-old saying the first word and a three-year-old uh, conversing in full sentences. We have... Uh, signs of communication or language development delays and uh, which can manifest in many ways such as speech difficulties, limited vocabulary and uh, challenges in forming sentences and uh, children with delay uh, language delay may struggle to comprehend the meanings of words or have difficulty expressing themselves and uh, by monitoring uh, communication and language milestone, it's essential for evaluating a child's uh, language development and identifying potential delays that may impact their ability to communicate effectively. And early recognition of uh, communication and language delays it enables caregivers and professionals to provide targeted intervention therapies or support to enhance a child's uh, communication skills and bridge and developmental gaps. So this criteria is rated with the merit one. So we have one M1 and we need to analyze how e development developmental how e development area has an impact on other right so uh, we have physical development and social uh, emotional development and uh, uh, what's the impact of it so improvement in physical skills like coordination and balance can enhance a child confidence and independence enabling them to participate in social activities more actively for example a child who gains proficiency in fine motor skills like holding a carry-on uh, they can feel more confident in social settings and engaging in activities like drawing with peers and expressing themselves creatively they have uh, uh, creative uh, or uh, cognitive development and emotional development as well. Uh, link with other 
Okay. So, uh, for example, uh, the impact of this is uh, advancement in cognitive abilities such as problem solving and critical thinking can positively impact a child's emotional uh, regulation and resilience. Uh, example is a child who excels in cognitive tasks like uh, puzzles or memory game may feel more equipped to navigate a challenging situation leading to improved emotional and well-being and self-assurance as well. Then language developmental and uh, social development. So the impact is progress in language skills, including verbal communication and uh, language comprehension that can facilitate a smoother social interaction and foster a stronger relationship with peers and adults. Example, a child who develops a strong language ability can effectively express their thoughts and feelings, engaging or enhancing their social connection and uh, participation in group activities as well. And uh, I think that is all related with this part then we have there are many examples that can describe how different aspects of development can affect one another okay so here we have different examples so for language and language barrier and social development so what impact it could have a child facing a language barrier may struggle to communicate with uh, uh, peers and that leads to feeling of isolation and exclusion. If we talk about the outcome, so lowered self-esteem and social isolation can hinder social and behavioral development and affecting a child's ability to form relationship and participate in social interactions effectively. Then we have physical challenges and emotional development. So the impact is physical challenges like uh, being overweight may result in bullying from peers and uh, causing embarrassment and loss of confidence in, um, in the affected child. The outcomes are reduced confidence can have a negative effect on physical, emotional and social development potentially impacting the child's overall well-being and ability to engage in physical activities and social environments. Then we have uh, disability and development. So the impact is disability such as inability to walk uh, that can shape a child's experiences and perception, influencing various aspects of development. Uh, and uh, for the outcome, we can say that while physical limitation may lead to increased focus on learning and uh, intellectual de development, emotional challenges related to acceptance and understanding of differences may impact social, emotional, and behavior development. So these all are the important points. This one we have language development, intellectual development, and poverty and deprivation. <clears throat> right. So uh, for this one, we have example of a new baby in the family. Okay. So the impact is uh, the arrival of a new sibling uh, can evoke feelings of jealousy, anger, or loneliness in a child and effective, uh, effect, affecting the emotional, social, and behavior development. So there could be some positive outcomes. And however, the experience can also foster responsibility, sharing and nurturing behaviors and building confidence and positivity or positively impacting emotional and social development through increased interaction and relationships. For uh, language development, the impact uh, is language development plays a crucial role in organizing thoughts, ex expressing emotion and social interaction. 
uh, affecting emotional and uh, social development as well so if we have a delay so then a delay in speech development may hinder social interaction lead to poor self image and create barriers to communicate with peers or the teachers and potentially impacting emotional and social well being then for intellectual development um, is closely linked to cognitive abilities such as imagination critical thinking and problem solving and influencing a child's overall development and uh, encouraging a diverse experiences um exploration and imaginative play that can enhance uh, intellectual development fostering creativity curiosity and cognitive skills these are necessary for learning and growth then if we talk about poverty and deprivation so um the impact is poverty and deprivation can significantly impact a child's development limiting opportunities social experiences and academic achievement and uh, if you talk about environmental factors so limited resources and social opportunity opportunities in deprived environments can affect the child's educational outcome and overall development and emphasizing the importance of supportive community environment for positive experiences and growth so these complex interaction uh, between different developmental areas and external factors are crucial for promoting comprehensive growth and addressing challenges that may hinder a child's well-being and progress and uh, by recognizing the interact Uh, interconnected nature of development and addressing these factors holistically caregivers educators and policy maker can support children effectively in their developmental journey so we have the references here so that means we have reached to the end of today's lecture and uh, if anyone has any question please do ask and i'll try my best to answer your question is there any question from anyone no okay so we'll finish today's lecture then and uh, as as uh, see you next week on saturday and sunday same time till then all of you please take care and uh, we'll meet in the next class we'll stop the recording and finish the lecture take care bye